but idiots. Um, and the point being that we've there's already companies like you know IBM Global Services are already offering like certification of clouds. It's like how can you certify a cloud when we don't really even have any standards yet? So what's the benchmark for that? So it's obviously you know just what IBM feels is right. Now you know good luck to them, but it's it's hard to create a, a certificate when you don't even have you know established what what is the the standard. So just quickly on cloud properties. Um, this first one is, is pretty key. Uh, you can't really have, so I, let me just step back. The reason why I'm talking about these five things is that when somebody says to you, hey, uh, we're cloud enabled now, uh, we've, we've cloud enabled our products, you know, then um, you want to you wanna kind of just run through this, these points and just say, right, well, is this product or service they're talking about, does it exhibit any of this stuff? Uh, and in fact, it should exhibit more than just a couple of the items. It's not, uh, you can't say 100% this makes it a cloud, but there seems to be general consensus in the kind of the cloud community that these are the things that, that mean that something really is kind of cloud. Um, so the first one is abstraction of resources, and we know that best through virtualization. But unfortunately, everyone kind of gets, when you talk about cloud security, like the first question most people ask me is, oh, are you going to talk about virtualization security? And it's like, well, I'll mention it, but because it's relevant. But virtualization does not equal cloud, and cloud does not equal virtualization. Virtualization is just one way to abstract resources. I mean, if you speak to Google, they don't use virtualization. You know, they, the word that, I don't know if they would use this word, but the word that I would use would be it's more like a fabric. So they have all these machines, and they've custom coded you know, a software layer that goes above it, but they're not using virtualization. It's still an abstraction layer, because they can remove machines as they fail, and it doesn't affect what's going on as far as operations. The other thing is it's on demand. It's not a cloud if you have to call somebody up and they say, yep, we'll provision that for you uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, that's, that's just not. You know, you've, you've got to be able to do it without interfacing with a human. Yeah, and you've got to be able to do it. Really, that means with some kind of payment instrument like a credit card where you can just do it. So that's another aspect. Elastic. This is always a good one. What does elastic really mean? Well, Amazon web services, they pride themselves on higher utilization levels than your average data center. So your average data center, they say, averages about kind of 20% usage and in terms of compute resource used. They're running at like 50%. And that's because what they say is that all the demand from their different customers that are in different industries kind of all combines together. It means that they, they can smooth out. So, But elastic means that you can shrink, not just, oh, can I have... 10 more virtual machines, but it also means I want to give back eight of them because my peak load kind of finished. So that's another one. Scalable, that should mean that you can keep asking for stuff, like I want more compute power or I want more storage. And of course, at some point, that has to run out, but it should be to the point where you know, you, you don't have to think about it. And that's, that's, that's the kind of magic that the cloud providers are, are doing, but ultimately, at some point, that will fall down. Um, the other thing is it's, it has to be API driven, so this comes back to not having to in interact with humans. Uh, there should be some kind of published API, and you know, really through that API you can do everything that you you consume the service through the API. And then finally, stuff tends to get referred to as something as a service, so uh, infrastructure as a service uh, would be an example. So those are the things to remember about cloud, and that's what makes it different from dedicated web hosting. Uh, or even shared web hosting, or any other things. Even it's different from utility computing. So it's a combination of different things um, which have these properties. Um, and that's kind of where the problem comes. Uh, generally, you're not meant to land airplanes with the brakes on, uh, but I guess this pilot did. And the problem that we have straight away is that if you think about a dynamic environment where resources can be moved around from one data center to another data center, and you don't necessarily control that. Then you're like, all of a sudden, you're, well, this just turns our network security model upside down because we're used to, yeah, that machine is there. It has perhaps some network security devices around it that have some fixed network addressing attributes. There's probably some state that's being maintained. And, you know, and if you suddenly move, if you kind of motion a hypervisor to somewhere else in the case of infrastructure as a service, then, well, what happens to all that kind of metadata about you know, where it is and it's been moved to another part of the network. And 
I think the, the problem we've got right now and what the vendors are working on is trying to figure out how you still maintain security in the event that something just moved to a completely different place so now f has a different context. So that's kind of just the immediate obvious uh, thing they need to solve. Now, this would be another opportunity to get a drink tonight. The most common thing I hear about cloud is people say, not necessarily technical people, but people say, well, it's just outsourcing, isn't it? We've always done outsourcing. Cloud is just outsourcing. Now, I'm interested to see if any of you have a view on why cloud is not just outsourcing. What's different? So in other words, where you might have outsourced to a dedicated web hosting provider, just to use that example, and now you're going to a cloud provider. And let's say you're a large enterprise, so you, know, you kind of care a lot about security. Any reasons why cloud isn't just outsourcing? Why we don't just manage it with a contract? Just. Any thoughts? There's a beer going. I'm going to be drinking it. All right. I don't think anyone put their hand up there. OK, you could have guessed. I mean, that was probably worth a guess. Um, the main reason that I would give is that with outsourcing, you can go and visit the outsourcer. OK? And that's one of the key things that you can actually go and talk to their system administrators. I'm assuming you know, you're a reasonably sized customer. You can go and talk to them. You can give them your 500 cell Excel spreadsheet with uh, all the questions on it that you know, they have to answer, cut and paste from the internal uh, stuff. And you can, you, can have that, you can have a conversation with them. With the cloud stuff, unless you're a huge customer, well, they're not even going to tell you where the data center is. You know, like Google doesn't publish where their, their data centers are. And, um, and I think that with, with outsourcing, you have a greater sense of what's going on with the systems. You may not own those systems. Sometimes you do, but mostly you don't. But you have a greater sense of what's going on with the cloud. We're kind of being offered a, you know, a black box. And it's like, here's your API front end. And we'll look after everything at the back end. You don't need to worry about it, honest. But the truth is, there's no cloud magic when it comes to security. And even though they've built these cloud platforms from scratch, from the very, you know, from a, a clean piece of paper, unlike a lot of our enterprise uh, systems, that doesn't mean that they've kind of suddenly solved all the security problems that we we deal with in the in enterprise. And that's the, that's the thing to bear in mind with this. It's it's not that there was the best security people in the world got together, sat down and said, yeah, we're going to do cloud security and we're going to make it right this time. No, they didn't. I mean, they were companies that they have a business model and they're, they're trying to set something up quickly. So they did whatever security their customers asked for, which, you know, on average, we could say isn't going to be very much. It's only going to be people with, you know, specific requirements. So let's just quickly talk about the cloud types because this is where we can have a meaningful conversation about something that isn't just a cloud. So the first thing is that the, a particular cloud type is based on a platform. And you know, platform's the, the fancy word that just says you know, you, a, a provider creates a platform. Then there can be like an ecosystem around it, and people can plug into it. And that, that applies to security products, normal IT products, everything. But with cloud platforms, what they've done is they've basically stitched together a whole bunch of different open source software from all kind of all over the place, welded it all together, and said, right, we have a we have a cloud platform now. We have an API that, that can be called. We have some probably some middleware that uh, shoots off messages to the relevant um, back end systems. We have some orchestration, an orchestration layer which is responsible for uh, how the resources get moved around and everything. And so there's, if you just imagine like from a, if any of you pen test or whatever, or just trying to maintain systems, you know what it's like if you have, you know, loads of different libraries and you kind of, you know, it's, you can get yourself kind of twisted up really fast and you, trying to actually keep all these up to date, like if you've got open SSL, you know, you generally want to keep that up to the latest rev. Um, and what they've done is they've kind of, you know, got this stew of open source software and there's, and they're doing that because they don't want to pay license costs, fair enough. And because, you know, in most cases, it's easier to glue that together and, and do what they want to do. But the thing to remember is that there's a cloud platform, which is basically brand new software. So what do we know about brand new software and security? So we have maybe a sense of, you know, uh, it's kind of a very interesting proposition that we have such a, a big attack surface and such a new attack surface. 
And we haven't even talked about 